You know what bothers me a lot, Jay? What's that, Ryan? When you have like the standard earbuds that come with your phone, of course they're wired. When you do anything active, that wire gets in the way. Have you never had wireless earbuds before? Never. Ever. You know, I've, I've never been, had. I've been rocking them for a little while now. I made this statement. We talked about this. Studio Sweden. S-U-D-I-O. Not studio. But studio. Su- but studio, like the Phil Collins song. s s studio You familiar with that song? No. Okay. Anyways. I love the Tarzan soundtrack. It's though. a good song. We'll listen to it later. Um, everybody's got their headphones they like. They've got their trusted headphones. But you don't always want to use your favorite headphones when you're doing things like working out, running. You might lose them, whatever the case may be. What did you think about these wireless headphones? I enjoyed it. It was yeah. a fun little toy to play with. And I'm one of those people that thinks that you don't have to go get some beats to have quality headphones. Absolutely not. I've, got a, I've got a video coming out about that soon. <laughs> beats are like the, the title of the headphone industry. You're just paying more for, I mean, for no reason. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, that, that, that's true. So um, when I looked up all the... Uh, products on studio sweden i was uh, very impressed they're very like they're just very like distinguished looking they're so how, they're beautiful how headphones. great was it to unbox those it was it was very slick i've got the i've got the box in front of me and very very slick packaging all of it looked really great so uh they've got uh some gold tips as well rose gold tips mm-hmm. uh so that was they're they're just beautiful headphones and there's there's so many different types uh i kind of didn't realize how many types of headphones there were until I looked at the website. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Look, uh, we got the wireless earbuds. They sent them to us, and they also have on-ear, over-the-ear headphones that you can use that are wireless as well. Better and for running. Absolutely. And if you're an iPhone user, especially an iPhone 7 user, they did away with that auxiliary cord input. So if you're not on that wireless game, go to studiosweden.com and uh, pick some up. They gave us a discount code. Yeah. What's that code? Sight and Sound 15? That's right. That's right. Sight and Sound 15 to get 15% off. It's always nice to have uh, an extra pair. And uh, true. they're affordable. Actually pretty cheap for wireless headphones. Wireless headphones can get yeah. up there. I think the ones that we have, are the, were those 79, I think? Yeah, I think I so. think that those are the ones that we got. So uh, yeah, go to studiosweden.com. If you're a listener of Sight and Sound, we can get you 15% off. Just use the promo code Sight. And and written out sight and sound one five uh, and yeah enjoy and uh, let them know let them know what you think but also let us know what you think because uh, we're all in this together we'll that's all be uh, we'll right. all be using the same uh, same headphones step up your headphone game that's right. I'm in charge today. <laughs> some, we have some of my teeth. <coughs> oh, God. It's all that vaping you've been doing. Yeah. The popcorn lung. Is that, what does that even mean, though? It makes your lungs look like popcorn? No, like, it's... Uh, okay. They make popcorn this noises? Is actually, I'm actually... This is a good thing to talk about. We, we yeah. talked about it, but I still didn't get it's any It's called popcorn lung because there is a chemical called diacetyl or diacetyl. Uh, it is a sweetener chemical that they use in in butter flavorings. Okay. And a lot of people back in the day that worked in popcorn factories and used this flavoring for their butter, uh, they got this thing called popcorn lung because of the chemical. And they were using it in some e-cigarette juices. And when they figured out that this was a thing... Even though it's now sensationalized and people use it in their headlines, vaping causes popcorn lung. The industry has self-regulated itself, and they no longer use that chemical. Uh, like ninety-nine percent of people don't use that chemical. It sounds in their like juices. you're arguing with someone, Jay. I'm not, argu- I'm not arguing. It's just a very. Uh, it's a thing that people use to be like, "Well, did you know?" Okay, I, I'm. I'm health conscious. But I'm also very annoyed with health reports and because Just in it's general. so it's so inconsistent and so all over the place and water can kill like, you. Like for example, like you know how I am with paranoia. Like right now, right. I feel like I have tetanus. If oh I really? Could, is that a thing? 
if I go to <laughs> if I go to WebMD right now, I can convince myself that I have something wrong with me. AIDS. So yeah, yeah, essentially. <laughs> even, even though it's been a while since you've. Yeah, even though there's no way I could have AIDS. Somebody just came up and spit in your mouth, like yeah, maybe yeah. maybe I drank someone's sprite and he happened oh, okay. to be contaminated. Because that's how that works. So <laughs> it's kind of like it's kind of like that where you get on the internet and you can find something wrong with anything. Like our beloved Lacroix. Lacroix. Everyone seems to be giving a shit about Lacroix uh, <laughs> in the Sight and Sound Facebook group right now. But like if you if you look up, is Lacroix bad for you? They'll say yes, and they'll talk about how the cans are lined with that one chemical. BPA, is that what it's called? Sure. Okay, so basically, it'll tell you that LaCroix is bad for you because the cans are lined a certain way. As if LaCroix, as a brand, is the only company that has that can line. Right. But it's actually just cans in general. So, yes, you can basically find out that everything is... Everything is bad for your health. But clearly, LaCroix isn't nearly as bad for you as if you drank the Mountain Dew. Yeah, 100%. So, look, look I so when I was in uh, school, when I was in college, getting my media studies degree, one of my favorite classes was a society of media. Uh, it's not society of media. Uh, sociology of media. It's always media with you. Let's... That's it's, what I, it's what we do. It's what I do. It's literally what I'm we Jay do. Um, but it's a fascinating thing. And for, I'd say, a good three weeks to a month, we talked about fear-mongering in the press. And, I mean, it's funny. You've seen Anchorman too. Yeah, movie sucks. It's not the greatest movie. But it does have a pretty good underlying message with it about how news at one point was one thing and then all of a sudden became yeah. something completely different. Becoming aware of that, it's like pulling back the curtain. It's like seeing Mickey Mouse at Disney World take his head off and smoke a cigarette under the bleachers. Yeah. It almost, news in general is legitimately unwatchable, unreadable for me because everything is so sensationalized. Yeah. I remember, just to your point, um, it's like anytime something new comes out or something cool or trendy comes out, the immediate thing that follows it is a witch hunt to find out why it's terrible. That fidget spinner you brought to my house? Yeah. It can cause cancer, Jeff. I'm sure. I'm sure. But I remember when uh, Kerrig... Actually, what it would be is I guarantee that it's gonna. there's going to be a report. If it hasn't already. Right. Carpal tunnel. Or, 100%. Or, or some kind of rheumatoid yeah. arthritis or something like that. Yeah. Uh, Kerrig, coffee <laughs> makers or machines. like Those cups? So eventually it was like why Keurig coffee is killing us all. And it's like, I, I thought it was going to be something like, oh, the plastic is leaking chemicals into the thing. It was purely because of how they're not recyclable. And I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? Like, well, I, I mean, get waste, it. waste is an issue though. You know what? I get it. But you know what? You know what's an issue? Human beings in general living on the planet Earth it's true. is fucking everything up. Just live your life. <laughs> it's solve, okay. Let's solve the plastic bag thing first. Yeah. Too many plastic bags. Yeah. I worked in retail. P customers ask you to bag their Pepsi. And in my mind, I'm thinking, you don't <laughs> fucking need this plastic bag. But, but before, before we have a conversation about what we can and can't do to do better as human beings on planet Earth, can we please have a discussion about just the fact that that news story was created specifically to cause a controversial conversation. No one would have thought about that or even probably gave a shit about it, right, wrong, or indifferent, if somebody didn't say, what can we freak people out with today? It's just coming from a place of, you know, shittiness. Yeah. Altogether. I understand. Speaking of shittiness... Do you want to hear about my Starbucks story? Today? Let's do the week. Yeah, I got, I got something for you later, but let's do our weekly Starbucks story. So, if, we should release these as like an anthology series. If people, <laughs> if people, are, are you, this would be a great YouTube series. Oh, absolutely. The week in Starbucks. <laughs> Look, it's not shtick, and I told Kayla today that something 
always happens. What it, so what is week. that? We we go there every day of our lives, but it's one of the most annoying things that we do. What is that? Yeah, I um so just to get it out there, I, I drink a lot of coffee. I love coffee. And in this in the winter time, or just when it's not hot as ass outside, I drink warm coffee from a coffee machine, whatever. But during the summertime, I'm, I almost exclusively drink iced coffee. And I, I go to Starbucks every... I go to Starbucks twice a day. And which means I have to see these people <laughs> twice a day. Um, and there's just been ridiculous interactions. You guys have heard about it. But today, uh, I took Kayla to work today and went through the drive through ordered ordered my drink. Was she there with you at this point? She was there. Yeah, she was with me in the car. In fact, she's a part of the story. Um, pull up to the drive through get the stuff. Guy hands me my drinks. I'm waiting for my card back. And just while we're sitting there waiting for my card back, the guy looks out the window and says, do you have a question for me? <laughs> we were just like, no. No, we don't. And he said, Oh, well, you just, you look like you had a question and you want to know what our response was? It's just a thing. I said, well, sometimes we just look like this. <laughs> then Kayla said, why would you say that? But you're also completely right. <laughs> the second part of the story, he ends with, what did he say to that though? He said, oh, okay. <laughs> I'm pretty sure this is the guy that also asked me. Is that an e-cigarette? Oh, uh, how does that work? I think it's the same guy. Anyways, uh, so I'm dr- pulling off, driving away, and he said, "Hey, r- real quick." I said, "What?" He goes, "Do you work at Napa Prime?" Oh, uh, and I said, "No." That's a re- local restaurant. And I said, "No." He goes, oh, "Okay." It's like, All right, see you, man. Bye. <laughs> what a we- what a weird interaction. Yeah, that is strange. Well, it doesn't just g- just because you see me all the time doesn't it, mean is it- that it. Yeah, I expected more. I mean, it was funny, but do you have a question? That wasn't for me? really that wasn't like a kerfuffle. Like no, it wasn't. We we experienced a, a, a much funnier Starbucks story together, and then we did. Yeah. Okay. Tell it. Last time we did this, you were talking about how the Starbucks app uh, means that you no longer have to interact with any of these people, and you told me a great story about how you walked in, and you didn't have to do anything. You just walked in, grabbed your coffee, and left. And then we were together, and you were trying to showcase this entire method. Well, you also said you wanted to see it. And I wanted to see it, yeah. So you, you do it, and we drive there. I walk in with you. And I was laughing my ass off because they hadn't even received the order. <laughs> and we had to... Th- this it, is the only it, time that's happened, by the it, way. It became more of a thing, like, as opposed to if you just went there regularly. Like, this was a, a bigger ordeal than just someone walking in and ordering a drink. I had to prove and it to them. I was I was cracking up because you looked so defeated and so upset. I was. And uh, it just happened to work out that I happened to witness all of it. And then... There was an there was a another thing where you you told me about it this week. Have I not told the story already? I don't think you've told it on the podcast. No, unless you told it on after party. Yeah. So one day I decided to. I was like, you know what? I'm not going to use the app. Is it this one? Is this this the story you're trying? I about? think so. Yeah. I decided. You know what? I'm not going to use the app. There's no. There's nobody in the drive through. I need to get some food. <laughs> So one of the the best things about the app is that I don't have to interact with anybody. I can avoid things like that happened in the first story. Um, so I decided to go through the drive through, and the first thing that happened was I had to explain my order. Which when I go through the drive through, I do a pretty basic order: yeah. iced coffee, unsweetened with cream. I had to explain it to three different people <laughs> because they they didn't understand. <laughs> What it, what I was ordering. <laughs> then I also wanted to get food. So I asked for what I wanted, and they said that they didn't have it. I said, yeah. okay, that's fine. Asked for the second thing. They said that they didn't have it. They then proceeded to legitimately read off every single <laughs> food item that they had. Uh, 
And I couldn't just do that thing and stop them. Like, nope, stop at that one. Right. I just let them do it. Yeah. So I pulled to the window to pick up my stuff. And when I'm there, there are five people, stand, which at this point, the three people that I explained my order to, and then the five people that greeted me there, I'm pretty sure that's everybody that yeah. was working. There were five people standing in the window, and each of them gave me their testimony as to how good the food was that I ended up ordering. Yeah. This is great. You're going to love this. Oh, you've got to try it with the sriracha spread. Yeah. Ooh, but don't forget the avocado spread. And I was just like... So, here's what I'll say. Because I've worked in a retail space, customer service space, I know what that's like to be trying to optimize your sales, essentially. I get it. Overcompensate, yeah. I get it. But I also, like, there's also a bit of compromise. Like, right. they they have to know, and I will never, they have to know they're bothering you. They have to. Because they're not robots. Right. They're trained to be robots, and they're trained to have a script. Excuse me. That just burped. That was rude. They're trained to have a script, but there has to be a level of compromise. So, I guess what I'm saying is, why are these people bothering you? Like, to some level, like, the avocado spread's really good if you want to try that out. Right. But to, like, just be overbearing... It's just annoying to me. Your your stories are a lot more interesting than mine, though, because like the the big thing in, in my drive through is they hand you the card reader. Yeah, because people have to use the chip. Somebody's done that to me once now, and when it happened at yeah. mine, I was like, "So that happens. Get AIDS. That happens ninety percent of the time, right? So I know to do that, and I'm fine with doing it. Mm-hmm. I don't care. Uh, but yeah, they they hand it out the window, and I I have it in my hand and in my car, and I just put the card reader in, and I hand it back to them when it's done. Ninety percent of the time, so there have been times where I just give them the card and they do it. So today I go through the drive through, he didn't give me the card reader like normal. So I'm like, right. oh, this is the ten percent I'm handing them the card. I hand the the card to him, and he goes, oh wait, I'm gonna give you this, and then he handed me the card reader. I was like, okay. I just thought it was so strange. Right. Um, and again, the, this was another, I talk about how I, I've been there every day for like the past several months and it's a new person in the drive through window every time. Never is seen that, this. Is it still life. a thing? Yeah. I mean, I think there's been one person that I've seen crazy. a second time, but, but, uh, but anyway, it's crazy to me. And then they ended up giving me a second drink, which was like the only, why did that happen? Because they accidentally made two. I guess they thought I said two. What'd you get? Just Trenta, vanilla sweet cream, cold brew. No pumps of anything. You just I just say vanilla sweet cream, cold brew. Okay, so the yeah, there's classic syrup in there. Um, also, the, the last thing with this, then we'll move on. Years ago, years ago, like three or four years ago, I asked somebody at Starbucks. I said, "Hey, do you have sugar-free syrups at all?" And they got he <laughs> was just like, "No." I was like, "Okay, it's, I thought you did, but whatever." I never thought to check back on that. And one of the best things about the app is that you can see every th- option that you could yeah. potentially order. And they, not only do they have like sugar-free vanilla, they have sugar-free a bunch of stuff. I'm pissed at that person. I'm also pissed at myself that I just didn't second guess. Yeah, you should that issue. You should be upset with yourself. I am. I should be ashamed of myself. Um, okay, let's let's get away from Starbucks. <laughs> I agree. Um, you know what else has been frustrating me lately? What's that? The weather. S- social media. The weather. Okay, we got to talk about the weather. I I hate talking about the weather because it's the lowest common denominator. Like I can't stand talking about the weather. I was just weather. joking. I thought the weather's but, been fine lately. But it's it's less humid, which is a plus here. I but I'm frustrated because I love summer. I'm wearing a long sleeve shirt today. Yeah, I love summer a lot, and it just makes me feel better. And for some reason, when August hit, it was just like a flip of the switch. Like, oh, gear up. We're going to lose the humidity, and it's going to be fall before we know it. Yeah. That's aggravating. Oh, really? You don't like that? No. Dude, I've been looking forward to it so much. No. I like like warmer. I like, like it warmer rather than cold, but the humidity is just... It's unbearable. I hate... The, the, you don't even go outside that much the, anyways. The worse the weather is, the more moody I become. We've been going on a lot of walks together. You and I? Yeah. We haven't been on a walk in a while. Let's I know. Take, let's take a walk after this. I know, but 
of all my friends that I have, I've probably gone on more walks with you than any of them. I gotta watch my blood pressure. So anyway, get, get, if you think I've been uh, all over the place the past few months... I did comment to Kayla yesterday about how you were moody yesterday. It's gonna get a lot worse. And I don't, I don't mean like bipolar, but I'm just gonna be... I'm going to be a sack of potatoes. I guess the question, the real question. I, I have to fight like depression. Like if when there's snow on the ground, oh my God, you're, you're so fucked. <laughs> why, why, why can't we just make a, why can't we make it a majestic experience? Why can't we just go to California? Why can't we play in the snow together? You know what else California has year round? Oranges. Oranges? I'd love to have fresh oranges all, all, all what about? around. Avocados, I love avocados, but yeah, they've well, grown on me. But if you're if you're buying avocados, you are um, supporting a lot of the Mexican gangs. You hear about this? Okay. Does it do, do they cause cancer too? Yeah, they do. Um, Wait, no. I actually had something to say. I don't mind you getting moody. That's sort. <laughs> that's sort of been. Uh, Yesterday doesn't even count. That's like uh, the definition of our. Uh, like friendship, just dealing with each other's moods. It's I, fine. Wait, wait, no, wait, wait, wait. Can can I can I check you on it? Can I call you out on it? Sure. Okay. Ye- yesterday doesn't count at all. <clears throat> I was peeved okay. that you were like you've been shitty all day. I woke up. I found something online that I was mad about, and then we didn't talk for twelve hours. I brought up something else I was mad about, and then that equals me being mad all day. Because those though, were the every interaction. I mean, I I understand like every interaction had been that we didn't but have a lot. Yeah. I, I wasn't mad all day. It was a numbers I was just, thing. I was just watching What Hot American Summer. I was like, is this all a relationship is? Well, yeah, we're a couple. I'd forgot that What Hot American Summer even came out. How come you didn't do a video? I did a Stardust reaction. There's not a there. I mean, I I could do a video, but um, I don't know. We'll, we can talk about it uh, when we get into the meat of the show. But something that's been frustrating me is social media. Okay. Lately, we have this uh, we have this new app that came out. Saw a ton of people using it. The Sarah Ha Ha or whatever. Oh my god! <laughs> whatever. I cannot <laughs> believe we're talking about this. I forgot Sarah, about this. Sarah Ha. For one, I think it's a horrible name, Sarah Ha. But I I actually think the developers are like. I think they're Arabic or something. So this not- is this is like the third or fourth time something like this has come up. Well, kind of. I mean, there was that one in the MySpace days. It, I don't in the way what it's that called. in the way that Twitter is like Facebook, yeah. But like, and when you get down to what the social media actually does, it's not. Um, there's like Ask FM, that, which is like a Q and A thing. That, like, that's one, and then you had the uh, Tumblr, the, the Tumblr Ask button. Yeah. That people used a lot. Oh, that's true. So anyway, Sarah Ha, for those of you who don't know, it's literally just you download the app and you have an inbox. You're looking at an inbox and people can send you anonymous messages. And I assume they're just supposed to be constructive. I don't really think it's supposed to be ask me anything. I don't I don't think that's the angle because you don't reply to them. Right. It's just you're just looking at an inbox. You can share their message, and then like your tweet could answer their question, but you don't know. I can just get a message on Sarah Ha. I don't know if they follow me on Instagram. I don't know if they follow me on Facebook or Twitter. So wherever you put that answer, you don't know that it's getting to them. Right. So they're not. I mean, this is an early development. You can just tell when you look at the app. There's actually some features that aren't even there because it's not done yet. So I know it's early, but. As of right now, I wanted to test it out and see if there were any benefits to it to see if we could use it for sight and sound. It's a hard no. It, it's, yeah. it's just, at least right now, it's just nothing. And I've gotten a few messages and they're just just shitty. I mean, look, it, it's not. it seems like it's not a very communicative app. No. Um, you know, it's. It, I also feel like it's a little... Maybe not necessarily for you, but in general, it's like somewhat self-serving, like just for normal people in general. What do you think you're going to get out of this? The you're getting the me abil- personally. No, just I'm I'm talking to general. Yeah, you're getting this thing of. And it's hard to say this word anonymity. 
And uh, it's just like, and I also don't know what people get out of even submitting those things. Like if somebody legitimately had something, I, I'm, here's the perfect world scenario. Somebody who has always wanted to communicate with us, but they've been apprehensive. Maybe because, I don't know. I don't know what it is. Yeah. Maybe, maybe they're nervous about saying things on social media and they want to tell us something. That's good. But most people, like, wh- what is it going to achieve for you to send? A, a, thank God I finally right. got that off of my chest. <laughs> yeah. Fuck you. Just say it. Yeah. Like, if you want to tell us something, there are so many places where you can tell us something. Well, well this isn't an us thing. Like, this, I know. Was, this was just a me. So and like, I'm talking just in general. In general. But th- this also kind of falls under the category of, like, how I talk about how I've never once had the urge to give someone a thumbs down on YouTube. Right. You're essentially downloading an app that is a YouTube comment section. Exactly. So, I, I don't know what I was hoping for. I was hoping for something kind of more constructive and i didn't get it i should have known better i guess but um but yeah i just it, it, it's nothing i got a couple questions about oh sorry i just completely left my point in the way that i've never thought to give someone a thumbs down i've never once thought to send someone an anonymous message yeah so i don't know how you can sustain this because it like it would it would have to become my sarah ha profile would have to become the link and my Twitter bio, if I wanted like to keep this going, yeah, because the the app isn't optimized in that way. Like because I posted this four days ago, people have already forgotten I have this app because it's not a thing, right? So anyway, I've gotten a couple people that <laughs> asked me about Brian Davids. Someone told me my glasses look funny. Um, someone responded to my commentary on the app saying that this thing probably won't be sustained. Right. It's like okay. Thank you. Um, so yeah, it. I I tried it out. I thought I'd give it a chance, see what's going on. I've quickly realized it's just nothing. Yeah. Um, but last night, I got something. Of course you did. Where are we going? Where are we going back to? Two thousand and two thousand and four. MySpace days. This reminds me of some sort of interaction that people would have had on MySpace. You you know me. My mind went a million places last night when I got this. So, yeah. word for word. I forget what it's like to be single like this. <laughs> it's not even because I'm single. It's because I'm anxious. And I my mind goes nuts. Yeah, but my, my frame of mind for what you're about to say, Uh-oh. like if somebody sent that to me, I'd just be like, well, yeah, well, it's okay. not an issue. So the, the message is, not really constructive, but oh well, dot, dot, dot. If life were different, I'd totally go out on a date with you. So maybe it's Ralph Lenardi. It made me happy. Yeah. It made me smile. But I'm like, what are we talking about here? So my mind goes nuts last night. And I didn't want to bother you with it. But maybe uh, maybe it's Phil. It's there are so many scenarios that played out that this is someone I've known for a very long time. And that they married someone that they're unhappy with. And oh, they wish it was God. with me. Oh, <laughs> I'm not. I'm just saying. That's it could, hilarious. It could be a million things. It could be someone who doesn't even know me at all. It could be a sight and sound listener. Maybe it's my ex girlfriend who is fascinated with how successful we've become at playing games on the computer. <laughs> it could be. It could be a sight and sound listener that lives across the world, uh, and, and they're talking about how. <laughs> if you want to date the, the, Ryan, just say it. Like it could be a million things. Please date Ryan. The, and then the other thing I was thinking about too. No, please don't date me. I, I think you'd be very disappointed. Um, <laughs> I can give you several references. Can I ask you a question about that? I think would it if you let's just say next week you fell head over heels in love with someone, but they they were like the perfect person for you, but they were kind of making it difficult for you to do this podcast thing. Would I see less of Ryan, or, or would you put a hard like foot down on it I mean, we're talking we're talking dream girl perfect and i know part of perfect is like well she would be okay with it okay there you go the dream girl (laughs) the dream girl would have the quality of phenomenal podcaster So, so there might be a conversation like hey can we involve her and then you'd say oh gross well she can be on your movies episodes, but that's it. 
And I'd say okay. exactly, and then I'd be like, "Well, maybe we just start our own podcast." But Look, uh, I, I think I think Kayla's good at podcasting, but she's she is. she's only filled in for you. Really, it's true. All three of us. Well, we try to do that one after party. She she her personality isn't timid, but right. she's timid on this podcast. I think she is, but she flourishes once she gets into it. <laughs> anyway, so so yeah, it, the other thing that's disappointing. Is that, and this is just the reality of the situation. What's disappointing is that the probability of this being someone that I want it to be is very low. Well, if we're just playing the numbers game, so like yeah. it's it's very well, it's very <laughs> right. Of could the pe- be it could literally be anyone. <laughs> That's true. There are people that I wish this was. Yeah, but the likelihood <clears throat> le- less than one percent. Like there's no way it could have been. So, it could have been me playing a joke on you. Like a part of me, it is true. Shut the fuck up. Do you think it's me? No. Did that, is it, are you wondering now? Was it somebody I know playing a no, joke? No, I don't. I don't think that. Yeah. I made a joke that it was my buddy Eric. But well, that's why the app is shitty. That's true. So, part of me last night was I really hope this person actually gets the courage to DM me. Right. And then I realized, no, I don't. Because it's because the probability of it being someone I don't want it to be is very high, and so there's then there's going to be an awkward conversation like, "Sorry, I can't reciprocate." You okay. know? Okay. If if there was an option within the app to pay in order for it to reveal who it was, let's say let's say that it was fifty dollars. Would <laughs> would you pay? <laughs> would you pay the fifty dollars to see who it was? Yeah. <laughs> I love it. I love it. That's so fucking funny to me. I might I mean I might save up for it. Is it just because you've seen so many great coming of age movies? <laughs> it would make great but, in the script. Like I'm not gonna go into it, but I mean again, like I said, there are there are a list of people <laughs> where I'm like You're just hoping I, it's one of them. I would love it if it was any of these people. Um but yeah. That's so funny to me. You ag- <laughs> agreed to the fifty dollars. If it was a hundred dollars, would like where where do you where would you draw the line and be like, I don't care who it is. There's no way in hell. Is even a hundred dollars worth it? No. <laughs> okay, what's that to say? But but because it's public now, like because I right. made a joke about it on Instagram and Twitter. Yeah. If someone was like, "Hey, it was me," mm-hmm. and I wanted to confirm, like, if I real, I don't know. It just. No, I wouldn't pay a hundred dollars unless it. I don't know. Hundred dollars is too much. But anyway, the other thing that's been bothering me, uh, Facebook. I've got a funny story, Jay. Oh yeah. I was on Facebook last night, and there is someone that I'm friends with. They're attractive. Very attractive. Okay. And they are on. What is this? The dating they're, town th- dating. They're on vacation, and they're taking a lot of interesting pictures. Oh, okay. A lot of hot pictures. This is strange to me. Okay. So anyway, so I was uh I was scrolling through t- Facebook, and the photo album that they're uploading all of these pictures to. As I'm scrolling, it says that I'm following the photo album. Oh shit! Okay. Yes. Yeah. I didn't follow the photo album. Right. I follow the person because you know there's a difference now on Facebook. You're right. you're their friend, but you also follow them. It says following with a check mark. Right. I don't know what that means. What that means. Okay. I don't know. So oh, I don't know. This if is it's a great be- conversation. I don't know if they check that I'm following it because I looked at the album before. Looking at it on a previous day, but I don't know if that person got a notification that I selected to follow this vacation photo album. I think I, I think I noticed that the other day. Okay, let's just have a let's let's tie this in. I want everybody listening. We've been going thirty minutes. I want everybody that's listening <laughs> to this to be one hundred percent honest with themselves with what I'm about to say. There is a day that every person who is active on any social media dreads that one of their favorite social media sites is going to make it to where 
you can no longer lurk on people without them knowing. Okay. Yeah. Like, and we all do it. Yeah. We all lurk. I, I have no problem admitting that I was oh. looking through the photo album. Let, let's not, yeah, let's not beat around the bush. We all lurk. Yeah. All right. A couple one, two lurkers up in here. Yeah. And, um, yeah, that would just be terrifying if one day it's like you, you miss the fact you miss like the privacy policy update. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't read the fine print and they were like, you're lurking on somebody and you're just like, Oh, by the way, it's uh yeah. Ryan Snelling's lurking on you right now. It's like, fuck. I mean, that's, that's like another level. Though. I guess the, the real like, co- it's one thing to like the pictures and maybe comment. This looks fun, blah, blah, blah. But to get a notification, Ryan Snelling is following this photo album. Yeah. While you're on vacation, that is so fucked. Well, and, th- th- there's a question of there's a question of of morality. Should people be able to know? Should people be able to know if people are looking at their stuff? The thing is, like, they're she's putting those pictures up, right? Because she's celebrating a family vacation. But included in those vacation pictures are pictures of her in bathing suits, right? So she could be putting up vacation pictures to show. Extended family. Right. And the last thing she wants is a guy to be like, oh, I'm following this just by the chance to. And so it was really weird. Like, I, my, again, talking about my mind going nuts. She, her family, I know them. Right, of course. So I wonder if there's a conversation amongst those people. Like, nah. this guy's following this. Hey, like, I've got an idea. Here's how we test it out. Go to one of my albums. Well, not right now. Not on the show. Go to one of my albums and just start lurking on some pictures. And, and then see I'll if let it you follows know. it? Yeah. Um, I have i don't post a lot of pictures on Facebook, so I, I definitely either. haven't gotten the notification that someone else is following. Like, I don't either. So you can't test that out. But anyway. Um, well, the, just to, go, to sort of close out that question that I asked, the morality thing. Here's what I think about it. I think if you're putting... Anything on social media, you have to be aware that you are putting yourself out there for people to see. If you don't want people to see things, then you make it private. There are people, there is a feature on Facebook to where you can only allow certain people to see certain things. Yeah. And, um, yeah, but I mean, it, it's one thing to like a picture or follow a girl that you think is attractive. Right. But it's another thing to like. I remember back in the that, day. That's different. That's a step up. I remember back in the day uh, when f- Facebook wasn't necessarily super new, but I wasn't like using it all the time. And you remember there was like a period, like a, two years where Facebook changed its layout like three times in the span of two years. Do you remember that when that happened? I think so. I went on Facebook one day and I thought to myself, I wonder what my friend Mark is doing now. And I went to search his name, Mark Bennett. And it posted a status of just his name. <laughs> and I was like, God damn it. That's great. <laughs> yeah, it was hilarious. Um, there was a time when uh, my Snapchat would just tell people that I screenshotted their pictures. Yeah. When I hadn't done it. Oh, really? That's awesome. Yeah. No, I'm not, I'm not talking about the the standard function. No, no. That's, no, that's awesome. I people, love that. People, I would just get messages. Why did you screenshot this? And I right. had no idea what they were talking about. Right. And if I went to my photo gallery, right. the picture wouldn't be there. Right. So I would send them a screenshot of my photo gallery saying, right. look, I didn't. Like, here's my phone. Yeah. My, uh, I had a friend that would screenshot everything. And deny it. No, and he didn't really realize what was going on. Like, he didn't know that it notified people. Yeah. And he would be like, oh, dude, I check out this girl. And I'd be like... Yeah. Why stop doing that? Yeah. And he was also this is when Snapchat first came out. He was like obsessing over certain things. He's like, Man, this girl sent me this picture. What do you think it means? I'm like, She probably sent it to a bunch of people, not yeah, just yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, and he's yeah. like, But I think it means something. I was like, No, it doesn't. <laughs> it doesn't mean anything. Come on. This That's was hilarious. actually a conversation Jay and I had. It could have. It could have. No, been, I'm just but, kidding. Anyways, um, let's, so th- this episode is going to be loose because I'll just be straight up. I don't have a fucking movie topic to talk about. It's been so slow. My music topic is very, uh, very. Do you want to? Well. Well, I want to take like, a break because I have to pee. I was going to say we're like 30 minutes in. Let's just go on and take our break and then okay. talk about whatever the hell we want. All right. Well. Uh, let's, okay. Headphones are a massive part of our everyday lives. 
chances are you're probably listening to this podcast on headphones right now. That's how important they are, and we know there are a lot of headphone companies out there to choose from. Let's talk about Studio Sweden. That's S-U-D-I-O Sweden. They offer a wide range of different types of headphones, including traditional wired options as well as wireless. If you're an iPhone 7 user, you're probably looking for a pair of affordable wireless headphones, and Studio Sweden has you covered. They've got wireless earbuds as well as over-the-ear options. And if you like to stay plugged in, they've got you covered there as well. Go to studiosweden.com and check them out. If you pick up a pair, make sure you use the promo code SIGHT and SOUND15 for 15% off. That's SIGHT, A-N-D, SOUND15 for 15% off at studiosweden.com. Like I said before, this is just going to be... Uh... A whatever we want it to be like we know what we want to talk about with music there's a couple of things in tv there's not there's nothing to say about movies there's something uh to be said about this is somewhere in between an after party and an episode of sight and sound weekly yeah we could easily call this an after party by the way dark tower there's no chance in hell you, I, not only is there no chance in hell that you're going to see this in theaters no it's just not, not going to happen no i don't think you're ever going to watch this there's just no point it's a, it's almost the exact same reason why I refuse to watch Amazing Spider-Man. Well, there's a there's no point now. I guess. well, I mean, I guess it just depends. Well, Pete, I mean, you're and I I take your point. Your point to me was well, it's just nice to see. <laughs> it's just like, <laughs> I mean, I guess, but so, I mean, so, if it's for free, if I can see it for free, and it's just like if I catch it on one day, there's no chance in hell. Sometimes that, I sometimes I think about like. Would it be better? Because I pr- I completely disregard Spider Man three as a movie. Essentially, I saw it in theaters, and that's the last right. and only time that I need to see it. It's a great example of so, uh, of how bad a comic book movie can be. Yeah. yeah. So I, I've had this thought over the years. Because so okay, so only the first two Raimi Spider Mans exist. Part of me thinks, can we just couple Amazing Spider Man one and then his Spider Man two and have that be our two Spider Man movies? <laughs> right. <laughs> like, like I, I would love to watch those movies back to back and just think like this is the same Spider Man. Because <laughs> sometimes I do get in moods where I would prefer to watch Amazing Spider Man one. You know what would be great one. to do? Cut together all of them. Yes, but only use the origin of Amazing Spider-Man, the origin portion, and then just imagine the rest of Spider-Man 1, Raimi Spider-Man 1, as him just like a little bit older because he looks like he's... Just just call it like the perfect Spider-Man 1. There's no way in hell that Tobey Maguire can pass as a like an 18-year-old in high school in that movie. It's kind of like what I'm doing right now is editing all of Superman scenes out of Batman v Superman. Yeah. Because <laughs> it's a better movie. <laughs> You know, I still I still haven't seen um, Man of Steel. Really? Yeah, still haven't seen it. Are but, you gonna watch it before Justice League? Yeah, sure. Why not? Uh, maybe do an ever before scene. It'd be great to do. Um, yeah, we can talk about that. the uh, the thing about Dark Tower. Here's I, w- I want to. It's funny because of all. You, do you want to ask me questions? No, it's funny because most of most of the people that I've seen review this movie on like YouTube and Collider and Schmoes and you and uh, my buddy Carl and Mitchell went and saw it. And I still, out of all those people, I am the one that has the most context of it and I won't go see it. Yeah. And it comes down to the fact that the more I'm reading about this movie and the fact that it's trying to be its own thing, it's not even really an adaptation of the book. Like they're, they're using concepts and names of people essentially and certain story elements that again, there is no reason this is going back to the, uh, just comic book movie discussion. Like the source material is there just recreate what's already existed. (laughs) That first book, I think you had mentioned, you had mentioned something to me about, you were just like, I'm that movie made me not want to read the books. And I, I get that to a certain extent, the gunslinger, that book, this is to anybody that ha- has that same feeling. You just are completely tuned out of it. That book, the gunslinger exists as its own story. So well, right. and it's, yeah. it's crazy because there are like Harry Potter books and books and series that they're clearly and movies 
they're in a series. Like they can't they can't stand on their own. Right. These movies stand on their own. Or it, I'm sorry, that book stands on its it own. It kind of felt like I, I and I said this in my review, I was like, the the movie the, what the movie presented, the premise and everything, right. it sounds dumb. Right. Like it, it it's like Growing up, you have all these different types of toys. Or it's like in Toy Story. You put the dinosaur up against the cowboy. That's what it felt like. It just felt like a lot of things that there were just ideas, and I didn't know why there was a gunslinger <laughs> with this like Western like perspective versus a sorcerer who can uh, kill people by telling them to kill themselves. Like It just felt like it was presented any other way, maybe. It would be cool, it, but it felt like a kid just playing in a sandbox. It's like okay, now there's this cowboy, and I'm kind of simplifying it, but cowboy walking through a portal to meet up with this sorcerer. It's like the what it was presented. It was just it just was dumb. Well, let me let me take everything that you're saying and put it in, put a different spin on it. So there is, there are a lot of movies out there that I get not frustrated with them in general. I'm just disappointed because the world that's built is is interesting but we're just sort of dropped in it and the movie begins and the movie ends and we really don't get it that we don't get anything beyond that a movie that's like that that has a very interesting world with things that are already established that you would love to see what else is going on with it and they just they just don't because the movie exists really well as its own thing is looper Looper sets up a world where there's some crazy shit going on. It's futuristic. It sort of has this grounded level to it, but there's people with psychic powers. They really barely touch on any of that. But they, but at least they do. They do within the story itself. Yeah. The Gunslinger, the book, is exactly like that. In fact, those the more I'm talking about it, those two movies have a lot in common with each other. I'm sorry, that movie and that book have a lot in common with each other. So I don't know what a gunslinger is still. Right. Having seen the movie. I have no idea. That's unfortunate. I have no idea like why or how he's a sorcerer. And I said right. this in my I said this in my YouTube video. It's like I don't have the problem I don't have a problem with the concept of a sorcerer. Right. I love Harry Potter. It's <clears throat> like that's not that's not my point. It's like I'm not against having a sorcerer in a movie. I just want to know the why. And okay. I want it to make sense in the context of the story. And and I have none, so I, I don't know what makes him a sorcerer in this world that has gunslingers. So I don't like, I, I don't know how it works after seeing the movie, and I also don't, I didn't, and this is a character problem. I didn't know why he wanted to do any of what he was doing within the film. Um, what's funny is uh, Lost takes a lot of cues from Stephen King stuff. Also, The Stand, also The Dark Tower. Also had a character called the Man in Black. Right. I think if you would have thought about that in context of that movie, it would have made some sense. No spoilers or anything here, I guess. But and it's funny rewatching it with Kayla. She's saying to herself, "Okay, I get that there's a smoke monster. I get that it's a threat. But we literally have it. It's just a threat for many seasons in that show." It's just something that exists that's threatening their well-being on the island. Eventually, you get to it, and there's so I mean I'm I guess spoiler if you've never seen Lost, but it sort of is a representation of evil. You have dark and you have light, mm -hmm. and the man in black on the island shares the name of the man in black because essentially that's I mean he has a goal obviously, but that's what he is. Well, so, almost a devil sort of thing. I see how you're drawing the comparison, right? Because they're obvious comparisons. Right. But it, as far as like, if you're if you're making the point, like, so how did you find yourself giving yourself to Lost as opposed to the Dark Tower? I, it is a little I bit. There, those are two different things. It is a little bit devoid of. Uh, there, in that uh, sense, it's not the same. It, it's funny. It's if we're talking about narrative and story, I think it's funny. Again, I've talked about this before, but I think it's funny that we give certain passes to certain things. Like in some stories, it's okay that things aren't explored or motivations aren't necessarily explored. But, and I'm obviously not defending and I haven't seen it, but I'm fully aware that this thing had many problems just besides what you're talking about. I mean, yeah. the fact that it was 90 minutes, the fact that from what I've heard, there's some CGI issues in it as well. I think when when you have the 
whatever the rope the amount of rope that we give movies becomes much much shorter the more problems there are in it is that a fair statement to make reward that okay you're you are much more forgiving of of certain things of movies if it's just a great experience as a whole you you can walk out of a movie and not nitpick things sure. if it's just fun and it's a good right but when there's certain if the enjoyment factor is at all dampened if it's reduced at all those nitpicks really do surface their way, way to the top yeah the mov- movies have much more there's an experience factor to a movie yeah that tv doesn't have to have i think people i think people, that's why i mean that's why people say the battle of the bastards is uh, most people think that that's the best episode right because it right. was the most cinematic and it was about experience it's just fun but yeah. if you want yeah exactly and i mean someone could argue that like any other episode that kind of dives into the characters is, is better than that episode, but well, it, it's, it's because it has the experience factor. It's the same thing I say about music a lot. And I've, I've talked about it recently, like me reviewing music. I mean, I, it's, it's starting to get ridiculous. Me, me or anybody going on a review and sitting and talking about all of these fine details. Look how smart I am. Look how much I know about music that you don't like at the end of the day, it comes down to, did you like it or did you not? And I know that's yeah. very broad and sometimes it doesn't make for a great discussion, but so, there are some albums, movies, TV shows that I just like watching them. Do I need to really explain anymore? Like it, some things are just fun. Yeah. I, uh, I was watching uh flick pick last night and he said something that I've been kind of feeling for a long time. Uh, it's, he he was bringing up the point how he was annoyed that people spend so much time just kind of going over the plot. So yeah. he, he declared that he was done going over the plot synopsis before his review. What is he, the Sam Esmail of and movie if you, reviewers? <laughs> if you look at my Dark Tower review, I pretty much just get straight into it. Like, I don't talk right. about, like, leading up to it. I, I mean, I might mention something or two, but I don't spend time talking about the plot synopsis unless I need to bring something up for my point. So I kind of thought that was an interesting that kind of kind of goes back to that the whole idea how people were uh, c- calling me out for using the word review or reaction in the video, but it's like, look, it's regardless, it's just my fucking take. <laughs> like yeah. I don't need it. I don't need it. I'm titling it review or reaction to optimize it on YouTube. If we but didn't, I have still to, gave you an opinion. If we didn't have to title videos anything, we wouldn't. But we have to title them something yeah. to let you know. It's like that's. That's the last thing you should be complaining about is how I titled the YouTube video. Not trying to change the subject, but I want to I want to throw something out there. I mean, we're done. I don't want to well, I want to throw something out there that <laughs> I think you might find inter- interesting. So, I posted this on the Facebook group the other day and we've talked about it before how interesting it is that there's so many people in the uh What are you looking at over there? I'm just wa- making sure that everything's going all right. Okay. My back is to it. All right, just making sure. Um, I, I, we've talked about it before that, that there are people who are here for movie stuff, you know, crossover pe- people with Collider and Schmozno, and they're starting to get into music for the first time. And that's really cool. I mean, not for the first time, but they're finding a new passion and love for music. And I love that. Have you ever thought about the inverse of that? Have you ever thought about the fact that there are people out there that don't take in movie content, and now you are the sole movie reviewer that they take in. Jay, I've brought this up to you off air. You have? <laughs> yeah. Well, Carl, the I, Carl I said, yesterday came up to me and he was like, "Oh, I watched Ryan's uh, Dark Tower review." And I was like, "Oh, that's cool. Did you watch anybody else's review?" He goes, "Well, no, I don't subscribe to them. He's the only YouTube or yeah re- movie reviewer I subscribe to." I've, I've told you a couple of times that uh, sight and sound's main thing should be music because right. I totally, I, I like the idea of people coming in through music and hey, my movie content is also there. Well, I mean, I like the same, I like the same thing about movie people coming in for music. So that's why, this that's is why, why we can't work together. This is why it's a, it's a great idea just in general. We did a pretty good job. Some with this. people would argue the re- reverse, though. It's What's like that? that is like, too spread out. I can totally see someone like looking at our channel and being a fan of one or the other, and just being like, "Yeah, but they also post a lot of 
album reviews about metal music and I don't care about that or something like that because you did a couple of those yesterday. But yeah. I mean, I could see someone easily doing that. Oh, absolutely. But. I mean, that's the beauty of new media is that you don't have to, to do watch anything. It. Yeah, you don't have to take in any of the content. Um, Was this an after party? It pretty much is. <laughs> Let's let's talk about the couple of things with TV. <laughs> okay, uh, Mr. We're, Robot. Trailer? Are we done talking about mu- movies? I don't know. Was that our movie discussion? I said that I didn't have anything for movies. Oh, okay. I thought you Every, were going to everything that up. came after that was totally unplanned. Like, yeah, we talked so about Dark Tower last week. I didn't want to replicate. A, so, what are we going to title the movie segment? Let's just. Well, it depends on what else we talk about. But I mean, we don't have to title it. I mean, uh, it could be two okay. TVs and a music or whatever, but. That was the nothing conversation. That might as well. Have been okay, the fair enough. Um, Mr. Robot trailer. I want to talk about Mr. Robot in general a little bit because I don't know. We haven't really done that, have we? When does it? It doesn't come back on until October. October 11th. Yeah. I mean, the first first trailer dropped. I'm a little here's. I'm a little bit apprehensive about talking about it just because I would love to go deep on it b- before it comes out, and I feel like anything we talk about here. I would end up recycling the conversation. So not necessarily. Okay, fair enough. I mean, That's fine. A trailer came out. Okay. Why is it different than any other okay. trailer coming out? I will let you control the conversation here. Okay. Because so, if I did, um, I would go in deep. Just to briefly recap, and this will be the part that we'll go over again, but Jay and I have uh, we've been watching Mr. Robot since day one. We were on the bandwagon before there was a bandwagon, thanks to uh, our good friend Cody Hecker. We. Uh, <laughs> We recap Mr. Robot, and we were so ground level of this show that we had a relationship with the show in USA. And well, Jay didn't get one, but I and a couple of a couple of other friends got exclusive Mr. Robot merchandise that you could not get on USA.com. And then season two came out, and it became one of the biggest shows on TV. And then they completely forgot about us. And well, then, and then it they also won awards. I mean, it's it true. Won Golden Globe, and, Emmy Awards. And then they, and then I no longer had a relationship with these people. They didn't get back to me <laughs> with my messages. But anyway, um, we have a. I have a love hate relationship with the show uh, ever since season two, just because it was so disappointing to me. But there's no question that we will be watching season three. We are anticipating season three to see what happens next. Um, Mr. Robot is definitely, and it deserves to be high profile on television. Even though season two is disappointing for me, it still deserves it. Regardless, so, regardless of what you say about it, love, hate the show, love, hate the second season, first, whatever. It's hands down one of the most ambitious shows on television. Easily. With, without a doubt. Definitely. So the season three trailer came out, like you said, it's supposed to uh, premiere on uh, October 11th, I think is how I uh, read that. Mr. Robot's weird because... They do some weird things with their marketing, too. They do awesome things with their awesome. marketing. I love what, their marketing. Didn't they purposefully, quote unquote, leak the premiere last year, like a week yeah. early or something like that? Yeah, I watched it. Yeah, it we cool. did. We both it, did. It was the night before. They had was like it? a private stream on YouTube or something like that. Yeah. Um, which is really cool. They put out some Facebook Live videos, which are great. There was like a countdown, and you didn't know what it was. And I clicked on it, and it was just really cool viral material. But anyway, it, it all that stuff is awesome, and I love that about the show. It's a lot more creative than almost anything on TV in that aspect. It's very. It reminds me a lot of Lost. Lost, there was a lot of stuff that you could get involved in yeah. outside of just watching it on TV. Oh, definitely. Going back to the fact, like, they had Hanso Foundation commercials for Lost. Yeah. Um, so, anyway, let's talk about the trailer. Uh, you called it a nothing trailer, but I actually got a lot out of this. Did you? Okay, fair yeah. enough. So, what I love about the trailer is what I wish we had with season two. Okay. Season three. You're gathering all this from, like, 45 seconds. Season three's trailer shows a revolution. There are people running through the streets wearing the Mr. Robot mask. Right. They, it's the- The F Society mask. Yeah, yeah, excuse me. The landscape and the environment, the world, the result of 5-9, it actually looks like what I wanted season two to be, which was a revolution, which was- We talked about that a lot, yeah. Which was um, 
as Tyler Durden would call, hitting bottom. I wanted to see the world, or at least America, hit bottom. Right. And it was sort of in this gray area in season two um, for me. Like, for some reason, it just didn't feel like, and I don't know if it's just because I've seen too many movies and too many shows that show this, but I thought season two would look more apocalyptic than it did. Well, the, and, the thing, I'm, uh, I'm going to try not to get into spoilers, but a lot of like the first four episodes of season two almost exclusively dealt with things going on with one Elliot. specific character. Yeah. yeah. And like you really didn't see the outside world. At and all. <laughs> I, I just realized that I probably shouldn't be saying anything that's spoiler alert. So right. if you aren't caught up with Mr. Robot, maybe you need to get out because you shouldn't be listening to a season three trailer. You should definitely watch anyone. it. You should watch it. In fact, season two is now on Amazon Prime, so you can catch up on it now. Season one of Mr. Robot is one of the best first seasons of a television show I've ever seen. Okay, well, I'm going to continue, because this is a season three trailer discussion, I'm going to continue talk like everyone has seen the show. All right, get out. So, get out and uh, come back later. But um, that's one thing I don't need to see in season three anymore. I don't need to waste... that's That's what I'm expecting. And based on what I saw in this trailer, is that we're kind of putting the Elliot, Mister Robot stuff to the side, at least not not on the the front shelf in a glass case. Like it's not it's not the main show right. anymore. I want to see the environment. I want to see the landscape that America is in right now and how it affects everyone. Because I don't know. I just didn't get that sense of it. It, it was they did a couple things. Like they were talking about how their ecoin was a thing, so it kind of talked about where the currency was and banks, but like, it wasn't enough for me. I don't know, because a lot of it was Elliot uh, being at the, the 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 place, so I don't know. Well, the first three episodes of the season were, three or four episodes of the season, were all about Elliot reconciling a life with or without Mr. Robot inside his own mind. And that's that's. F- cool that's fascinating but it was it overstayed its welcome and i said this when we recapped it when we did our recap back in the day before sight and excuse me i've got the burps before sight and sound existed that the sh- the, the season had pacing issues really bad pacing issues and it also has a problem that some shows have had i think the leftovers had this exact same show where they set up and built other plot lines and scenarios that were far more interesting than than the main one they were focusing on like yeah. the stuff with with Angela like you said the stuff outside of of Elliot's mind the stuff going on with Grace Gummer's character uh, baby streep all of that was uh even what's his name why am I forgetting his name BD Wong's character White Rose what, all the stuff with White Rose 10 million times more fascinating than what was what was going on like my experience of the first half of Mr. Robot season two was didn't you sort of beat this into our heads in season one? Like, why do we need to spend so much time? Beautifully shot. The show itself is, is fascinating, but it ju- it was its own worst enemy. So in the sense that Mr. Robot season one is fight club, fight club ends with Tyler and uh, Marla watching all those buildings collapse. Yeah. Okay. What's fascinating, even though I I love the way Fight Club ends, it's like now you have the chance to tell what happens after that. Right. So this might be my fault because I had that in my head, but what we got with Mr. Robot Season 2 didn't feel like it was worth it. Like, I wish... (laughs) I wish season two was condensed. Everything that they did in season two for like, what, 12 episodes? I wish everything that happened in there was like half of what we actually got. Well, the show also got way bigger. I mean, they went to China. It did they, get bigger, yeah. They, but. They, they went to China. They even played... I mean, do you remember the episode with with Angela sitting down playing the game with that kid and them talking about like... I mean, it got really bizarre talking about... Time, yeah. time travel yeah. and controlling time and all this stuff. Like, what the fuck does that mean? Introducing that into the show is very interesting, but it's also introducing something when we haven't even crossed the, the line for anything else. Sam Esmail, 
uh, recently came out and said that um, he now wants to do six seasons of this show. Oh my god! And that so we're getting to the halfway point of this. Um, I think this show, the thing that we've always said about it, the most fascinating thing about it is that it's on USA. <laughs> And that's nothing disparaging against USA. It's just, it's just crazy. Yeah. Um, this show is the darling of USA. I don't know the last show they had that was nominated or won awards. <laughs> and um, I think he's going to get whatever he wants. He's also writing and directing every single episode this season. A complete auteur. <sighs> You're only... You're only like that. You're only saying this because of what happened with season two. This is also a guy who is very, I mean, this is a guy that reads the comments. Okay. He went on a podcast and went face to face with a critic and pretty much acknowledged like, I mean, he defended himself, but he also acknowledged that there were some things that he could have done better. Do you like that about him? Or I, I I respect that and I like about I I mean I always think showrunners that have a face are very right. interesting and I could listen to them talk about their craft all day, but I just I saw what I got when he wrote and directed an entire season of the show right and it was it wasn't as satisfying well, than when he didn't do that well, the first time you do something is never going to be the best time you do something though i agree i mean he this with the exception of brave the storm's first ep i'm not apprehensive about going into this season necessarily but the second right i see a glimpse of what i don't like i'm gonna be like okay this might be a long road ahead yeah like i i'm i'm excited that the show is coming back i'm gonna binge i we we talked about how season two might be a different experience once once we binge it um so i'm willing to give myself to that and I would definitely do it probably after Thrones is over. But but the second I see those red flags, I'm going to be like, oh, boy, here we go. Well, I mean, I'm in for the long haul just because, <laughs> of, just because of Baby Street. Is it safe to say that we're, uh, we are going to podcast weekly about Mr. Robot? Yeah, there's no way in hell. I mean, I, I'm, I'm there's not, no way in hell we're podcasting. Th- this isn't hyperbole, guys. Like, this is season one of this show was amazing i mean i really do hold it in highest regard i mean i put it up there and people are going to be like what the fuck are you talking about we talk all the time like don't just throw words like breaking bad around season one was up there i mean it was really fucking good and um season two it was a letdown but i in no way shape or form would i say that it was bad television i mean it it's wasn't, not it's not bad no. i mean it's not we're not watching legend of legends of tomorrow here you know we're not watching Westworld here, you know, <laughs> it's uh, it was, it was, it was fine TV. It could have been a lot better though. Yeah. Uh, so speaking of superhero stuff. Yeah. Defenders. Oh yeah. I forgot we were talking about this. By the way, Wet Hot American Summer. Yeah. Have you watched, did you watch it the last time it came out? Yeah. All of it? Yeah. Did you enjoy it? Uh, yeah, there were some, there were some laughs. Did it need to exist at all? No. Well, I don't. I don't necessarily agree with that. Why? <laughs> I I agree. I agree with that with season two. Yeah. Like there were certainly laugh out loud moments, and no part of me was like, "Get the shit out of here." I didn't. I watched all of it yesterday, and it just seems like an. Ex- I mean, it's fine. It just seems like an excuse for people to, hey, let's get the band back together. Well, that's what season two felt like. Yeah. So, did you watch? I mean, you've seen the movie, haven't you? Yeah. Think. What do you think about the movie? I like it. I think the TV show is way better than the movie. I love. I mean, I love that. I love that first season. I loved it. Really? I was. I was really hyped about this second season coming back. Um, is there? Is everybody back? Is no. Paul Rudd in it? There's. Yeah, Paul Rudd's in okay, it. Okay, good. There were. There's actually a couple people, and I. Th- I think. And new I, people? Huh? New people? I think, from what I understand, maybe I haven't seen all of the movie. I know. I know that I've. I've definitely seen part of it. I don't know. Anyway, but what I will say is that there were people in season two that weren't in season one. Right. So I, I thought, well, maybe it, are those movie characters that were in the movie but couldn't make it for season one and now they're back for season two and acting like they were there all along? Yeah. I think they did that because there were a couple people I didn't really recognize. Okay. Um, particularly with season one. Is Paul Shear in the show? Yes. Okay, that's what I thought. 
Uh, but so, like then there was a whole thing with Bradley Cooper. Bradley Cooper couldn't come back this season, so they replaced him with Adam Scott. So of course they did. There was that replacement. So it's a it, clear. I mean, of course he's a clear replacement. <laughs> I can't tell if you're being sarcastic or not. For some reason, I am, but for some reason, it makes total sense to me. And I think it might be because Adam Scott's the type of care. Adam Scott's the type of person that can. He's one of those actors that can play serious and dramatic and play really funny. By the way, I'm a huge Adam Scott fan. Are you serious? The uh, Adam Scott from the greatest television comedy that's ever existed called Parks and Rec? N- not even that, but Party Down. Did you watch Party Down? I thought Party Down was okay. Yeah. Well, Ken Marino is also a national yeah. treasure. Oh my God, he's great. Also, um, he was in he was in Six Feet Under. He was in Adam Scott. Yeah, he, um, just for a little bit. He was in obviously uh, Big Little Lies. When I saw Step Brothers for the first time, yeah, he plays Derek. Yeah, with those abs. That to me was like my favorite part of the movie. Oh, it was really? Everything that involved him. And at the when I saw Step Brothers for the first time, I didn't know who Adam Scott was. Yeah. And because that was my first, he was, I, he was the guy I had seen before, but I couldn't remember from. Well, where. not even that for me. I'd never seen him before. Okay. So it wasn't. I didn't watch Party Down all that stuff until afterwards. Right. But it was all because of how impressed I was with Adam Scott and Step Brothers. So I just think that's kind of crazy how he made such a huge impression. He's my favorite part of that movie, and I've been following his career ever since. He's like strangely diverse. Like I, before this conversation, I don't know if I would have ever said, "Oh, Adam Scott's a very diverse actor." Kind of is kind of great. Yeah, his character on Six Feet Under plays a gay guy. Yeah, yeah. Um. So anyway, huge Adam Scott fan. Um. A lot of people were loving the fact that he got a scene with Amy Poehler, sort of a mini reunion. But um, there was just yeah. there was just a lot of. I felt like everything was kind of just tighter in that first season with everyone. <laughs> Amy Poehler isn't given anything to do. Like she has scenes because you you have to have Amy Poehler. But there's no through line with her arc. She dates Jai Courtney for a few episodes, and that is a pointless role. There's just right. a lot of, like, there's no win to some of these characters. They're just there because they're there, there for are the joke. famous people involved yeah, yeah. in this franchise. So everything that you described about season one, I actually think it fits for season two even more so. So, I mean, it, it's such an easy watch that it's hard for me to complain about it. Like, I'm not going to raise pitchforks or anything because it didn't do anything that I watched eight 30-minute episodes and had some laughs. But overall, I did, it, it didn't need to happen. I'm just not big on these, like, comeback types of seasons of TV. And it, a lot of it has to do with... Uh, it's just kind of the culture we're in with, with a lot of pop culture stuff now. I mean, obviously, the movies and, and reboots and stuff and... Music, you got those bands that are doing their reunion tours, and yeah, and now they're they're talking about like The Office coming back for another oh, season. NBC, yeah, NBC's trying to reboot a whole. I don't know, man. That is all an answer, in my opinion, to the threat of places like Netflix and Hulu and streaming services. It's so weird how actors are able to, when they're young, create. A character, and by the time they're old and retiring, they're going to um, basically live that character's life. Like everything Harrison Ford's doing with Han Solo and Indiana Jones, being there and creating that character, and then getting before he dies to you know coming back as a seventy-year-old yeah. Han Solo. Yeah. So it's like that's that's crazy, and that that sort of symbolizes everything that's going on right now. I mean. And and not to we're not adding anything new here, but that's where we are. It's just that we're recreating or going back to things that have already existed. But um, I, I just I don't mind them like taking that title and doing something with it. Like if somebody wanted to do The Office with like where where Scranton, well not Scranton, but where Dun- Dunder Mifflin Scranton is years later, that's fine. But to like just pick up with those same characters, it's just like. I don't want it to tarnish the legacy. I would love to see... It's already tarnished, but... I would love to see the same kind of show. Like, it is a sequel to The Office, but it's the same building and the same room, but the company is different and all of the people are different. So, like, a new company has moved in? Yes. Yeah. 
and it and it's like maybe the film crew is the same and they're like it's another company that like for a specific reason like you can talk about how this company took over Dunder Mifflin because Dunder Mifflin became obsolete or whatever so it's a quote unquote like Richard Linklater would say a spiritual sequel right same tone or but totally different characters yeah maybe maybe the maybe one person is the same or, like they they got a job in the yeah. same building or like, the, the documentary company that was making it like they had so much success that for the since the office went off air they've been actively seeking out a company that has people as ridiculous as this company and they've stumbled upon yeah another company but then again that's sort of what season one of parks and rec was kind of and that didn't really work i think i think parks was supposed to be um like dwight was supposed to be in parks like did you know that like it was the, supposed to be a spinoff kind like of? yeah parks and rec was supposed to be in the same universe but it's kind of not what's well, definitely not i mean it, well that was a huge it, criticism of only, season one of that the only show. thing that that yeah leslie nope was sort of a michael scott character the exact but, same yeah but um but yeah i i, I don't think parks and rec in the office share the same attitude and the right. and the sort of techniques and the uh, identity of the of the show are similar, but th- I don't think they're in the same universe, and they're not copycats. I mean, you wouldn't say that. No, no, no. The show evolved into its own thing, right? Hundred yeah. percent. So, I'm talking more of a copycat, but just a different company, and just kind of it's a copycat in the sense that it's documentary style and it's a comedy, right? But, yeah. yeah. So anyway, I think that would be interesting. But anyway, I I see what you're saying. But you recommend that I spend time with Wet Hot American Summer? No. Oh, okay. No, you don't need to watch it. I mean, I probably will. Oh, okay. I mean, I don't. I'm like I said, I'm not bringing pitchforks. Like, right. I'm not against it. It didn't take anything out of it. But as far as like needing it, no. Nah. This also was an. We talked about how Netflix just throws things out sometimes. I'm surprised that Wet Hot American Summer, which is more, in my opinion, a higher profile yeah. thing. I didn't see shit about it. Grace and Frankie. Two weeks ago, I found out that the show was coming back. Right. I I never saw the trailer. I had no clue. And I was a huge fan of season one. So I just thought that was so strange that I didn't even... I didn't even know about it. I'm dialed in. It's uh, weird. And then when I opened my Netflix app, it wasn't the featured... You know how it has the featured? It it wasn't that. It was something else. I just thought it was so weird. All I care about is Lost right now. We're watching Lost. Right. It's much easier to do when you have somebody that's never seen it before. Yeah, I agree. You should get a girlfriend just so that you could rewatch shows that you that she's never seen before. Maybe I'll just watch it with my mother. Do we need to take another break? No. Are we done with TV? Uh, the Defenders. Oh yeah, that's right. The Defenders. I keep forgetting preview. about the Defenders. So it's the, because Marvel uh, TV shows are trash. The only reason why I want to talk about it is because uh, certain people of the press and uh, specifically people at Collider have seen the first four episodes. Oh, really? Yeah. I thought they'd only seen one, but okay. Uh, they only released their first episode reaction, but I think they saw the first four. And it's positive. Good. And, and That's nothing for me. I don't, well, go over again, because <laughs> I need to hear it, and I think our listeners need to hear it, but... How much of every Marvel Netflix show have you seen? I have seen half of season one of Daredevil. Mm-hmm. I've seen four none ep- of season two. None of season two. I've seen four episodes of um, Luke Cage. I've seen like a bunch of random episodes of uh, Jessica Jones because Kayla's a big Jessica Jones fan. And I will always be in the room while she was watching it and this and that. Um, and I've seen like six or seven episodes of Iron Fist. <laughs> I've probably seen the. That's not true. We I'm, we watch like episode ten together. Okay, well I've probably I seen the most fact, of Iron Fist. We saw so much of Iron Fist, in fact, that I thought we watched the end together. And you said that yeah, you no. never saw the ending. No, which that I don't understand that. I I understand you stopping four episodes into Luke Cage. More than I understand you watching ten of thirteen Iron. Fist You know what episodes. I think it was, especially because it's the worst. You know, you know what it was was i think i was like in my mind i was like okay this is a new thing and i've got to be on top of it and i i just need to do it i need to get it done yeah but you had no desire to be on top of everything that predated the defenders i ended up stopping it and being like <laughs> well i ended up stopping it and saying to myself you know what this show sucks i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna finish daredevil 
watched two additional episodes that I hadn't watched before and just said this this is nothing. I don't I don't I don't agree with that sentiment. I like, know you don't. There are definitely variables. A lot of people don't. There are different degrees, I think. Like Iron Fist is clearly the worst. Luke Cage clearly has its own problems, but when you talk about the first two seasons of Daredevil and Jessica Jones, I mean, I think you can the the only thing about Jessica Jones that I'll say there's two things about Jessica Jones. One is it's so much different from anything superhero related in general that I think it's a harder thing to digest. Like you're, I think you're getting into it because oh it's a Marvel thing. It comes from a comic book, but it's very very different. The other thing that that sucks, I kind of think that's what it has going for it. It does absolutely. I think that's why it's digestible for people like think about Kayla because Kayla didn't care about Daredevil, did she? But yeah, she yeah, knew she that, did. She's oh okay. It. I think I thought, she's seen more of it than I have. I thought Kayla was just all about Jessica Jones because she actually was already... she's seen both seasons of Daredevil. Really? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that because I was I always ask her about anybody that's watched that show. I want them to tell me about how good Punisher is because it gets me excited and makes me want to watch it. <laughs> and then you finally just gave me the green light. You said just watch the first four episodes of season two. <laughs> just get it out of the way. And I, I'm I think I might do that soon. Um, You've been saying that for weeks. <laughs> 2018 the year I get into the NBA. Now's the time because Defenders comes out this week. <laughs> okay, but, I'll watch those. But you are going to watch the Defenders, right? Yeah, yeah. I was going to say unless it's, it's unless Ada. it gets bad and I it's tap Ada. out on it. Oh my god! Listen, I tap down on those shows like I tapped out. I just on don't the path. see like I have a harder time accepting when people like there's you, eight episodes of the Defenders. I feel like. I feel like it's there's no today's work. Yeah, but you don't have to watch it all the same day. You could that you could easily spread that out over a weekend starting on Friday, but it's harder for me to accept people that are like that just leave a TV show even though you have only 8 episodes to go. Like can, can I sum it all up for you without going back to our conversation earlier? I I don't know what it is. I just don't enjoy watching him. <laughs> I mean, it's plain and simple. I just don't, man. <laughs> Like I've had a way better time watching Arrow, and a way better time watching Supergirl than I've had watching these shows. That's that's interesting to me, just because I know that you and I don't accept procedural elements as much. And I'm not I'm not hailing Arrow and Supergirl yeah, 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 as like yeah. the best thing on TV. You just enjoy it more. Yeah, it's more fun. I mean, I I enjoy watching Arrow too, at least the, where you are. But prove it. I've already seen more of it than you. I don't know that. I've seen, you know, Deathstroke's in season two. I've seen two and a half seasons of Arrow. I could I could spoil the show for you if you'd like. There's really nothing to spoil. <laughs> Let's be honest. It did irritate me when you were like, I don't need to watch this in order. There's no reason. What? The DC you were, stuff? You were, like, you were like on season one of Arrow, and then you were like, so I started Legends of Tomorrow, and I was like, why didn't you watch it in order? And you go, it doesn't matter. Because I wanted to test and see if I legitimately needed to do that, and Legends of Tomorrow is nothing. That show sucks. I think it, it, makes, more, it makes more sense with The Flash and Arrow, because they actually have a relationship with each other. Oh, 100%. I haven't seen one episode of Flash. Not one. I wish I could just like coach you. I don't just need like, to be coached. You need a coach. I watch things how I want to watch them. You need a coach. There's no right way what to do, you, do anything. What do you want to talk about with the Defenders? I'm sure we'll do some kind of video review or talk about it again after we've seen it. But I, I, I mean, man, I just wanted. Are to, you dreading it? No, not at all. I, oh, I'm excited it? about it. I think. It, oh, okay. Look, the best thing about it is there's so many people in the show that I don't think they can really have a lot of fat in the show. Like, I mean, yeah. in, my, in my opinion, it's got to be all business. Like, I was gonna say it's, it might be bloated if anything. Yeah, like you can't. I mean, I just want it. I want it to feel like an eight-hour movie. Like I yeah. really do. I want it to be action-packed i want it to be badass i want this show to embrace why people are watching it we're watching the show because it's a fucking comic book show we want to see people running around their suits kicking ass i don't care about what's going on in the city i don't care about that just show me people fighting that's it it's and literally an exact opposite take of mr robot exactly because i don't go into uh, i go into comic book stuff for specific reasons. That's not necessarily fun, though. 
Because think about how, I mean, think about the fact that, like, Daredevil in its own identity is more noir than, say, something like Luke Cage. So there's a lot more, I mean, I guess they all deal with crime and they all deal with New York City crime, but just the the, the kind of approach is different. So I, I get the argument, like, I'm watching a superhero show for the fighting as opposed to Mr. Robot can have these elements, but, like... At the same time, though, there's variables within those superhero shows. Well, so sh- no, so seeing like, I don't know. Well, the the issue the issue is that they're trying, they're tr- they're overthinking themselves. Okay, like they, in my in my opinion, well, Daredevil is the best one. I think that's easily. Yeah, I think that's pretty much an agreed upon thing, and I can understand that completely, but. Anything outside of it's a comic book show, let's get some good fight fighting in there is is kind of like a risk, right? I mean, yeah. we've seen it with comic book movies. Not every comic book movie, not only can it not be Nolan's Batman, but a lot of them shouldn't even fucking try. <laughs> okay? <laughs> I don't need my comic book show to be the best TV show I've ever watched. You know what? I don't want to hear anybody say this is the breaking bad of Marvel shows. No. <laughs> like just be a comic book show. Just be just be a superhero show. This episode of Sight Sound Weekly is so weird. It is weird. Let's let's take another break cuz we've already gone longer than I thought we would. The and best we... the best Marvel show is Legion. 100% Legion or Daredevil? That's hard. Yeah. I don't know. I would say... They're so different. They are really different. If I had to pick, I would say... I would probably say Daredevil. Yeah. Like, if the question was, would you want to see three seasons of a Daredevil show versus three seasons of... A mutant show about I don't know Professor Xavier's son. It would be Daredevil. Yeah, I mean they're they're just completely different. If I yeah. want if I want to see if but I want to, but I'm not saying like I'm I'm not saying that Daredevil is clearly better than Legion because I would I could maybe argue that Legion's better than Daredevil. But as far as just like what would you rather have? What's more your thing? I would say Daredevil. Well, I, you want the ass kickery of Daredevil, but you want the thought-provoking elements and then of there's, Legion. I mean, yeah, and then there's the whole idea that, like, I'm a massive Batman fan, and Daredevil's the Marvel Batman, and so there's a whole that yeah. whole element, too. I think you're going to have fun with this music discussion. I agree. All right, let's get into it. Okay, what do we got? So I was... Uh, this was going to be a broader music topic portion of the show, for sure, but for whatever reason, I've been waiting for this day to come. <laughs> all year since we really started Titan Sound. And it all sort of happened at the exact same time. Every year there are news stories that come out where they get me pissed off or perplexed by the music industry as a whole. Um, And lately they've just been these odd things that have come out. So the first big news story that came out that you've been wanting to talk about for a while uh, is the fall of SoundCloud and SoundCloud sort of just shutting its doors or the threat of it shutting its doors. Uh, There was also a news story that came out, a study that was done about music streaming services and who pays the most royalty rates. Uh, Our buddy Eric sent us uh, the article that that was pretty much being shared around that I'd already seen. Anthony Fantano did a video on it. Um, And the uh, the last big news story that came out which was recently was that major record labels, Sony music Warner, and I'm sure others are basically reporting record sales, record revenues in like the most recent three to five years, which is also surprising considering a lot of people are saying that major record labels are dead. They're dying. Streaming services are killing the record industry and this and that, but that's really not the case. Which one of these do you want to, which one of these piques your interest? <clears throat> they all do. Okay. Um, let's just go through them. It doesn't okay. matter which one goes first. But the SoundCloud thing I've been wanting to talk about just because I've only read headlines. I'll let you kind of go into the nitty gritty of it all. 
But just to sort of simplify my perspective, I just don't know how this could happen. Okay. Because I, it's just hard for me to understand, like, why why does something that has such a wide user base yeah. fail? They have accounts right? So that it's like $15. Excuse me. I just say a watermelon. It's like $15 for the subscription for SoundCloud Pro. So if there's revenue, I'm just not sure why something like SoundCloud would die. I just don't get it, I guess. So when I hear like, it's on the brink of death, they need an angel investor, it's like, so is it because people are just not using it anymore? Because right. I don't I don't know if that's the case. Well, it's let's just address what SoundCloud is to a lot of people. SoundCloud is a service that... A lot of major artists use it from time to time. Kanye, for instance, before Life of Pablo, dropped a lot of songs, um, like songs to sort of hype up the album on SoundCloud, which is great. Chance the Rapper recently did it, and it brought a lot of traffic, which is good. That's fine. But it's mainly a place for unsigned artists and people in the underground music community. Uh, When I say indie, I mean legitimately independent artists. And... Most people that want to listen to music are casual music listeners, and they're using services that are already that they're okay. already paying for. Yeah, so I guess it makes sense now. It's more it's something that benefits creators more than it does listeners. Yeah, I mean it's a it's a but that's still but that's, it's the easiest place to put your music on the internet. But that's still like the, the creators. That's still the financial portion of it all. Because depending on how much bandwidth you want on there, you have to pay for it. Right. Audio like, bandwidth is pretty low compared so to other I, services. I, again, I guess I understand, like, if, for example, I don't know if I've ever gone to SoundCloud right. on my own will to listen to anything. Yeah. I've only used it to upload my music or our podcasts. But I've never thought, hmm, I'm going to go check out SoundCloud. So I am not a listener of SoundCloud, but I have given right. them money. So I just find that really interesting. That it's still the part that works, in my opinion, at least from my perspective, is the part that gets the money. So to see them fail, again, you could probably shed more light on it, but I just don't know why they're, they're failing. It's and just, why they needed people to scoop them up and help them out. It's just always been a stepping stone service. I mean... People really want their music on platforms like Spotify, yeah. Apple Music, Tidal, places like that. Um, so it's just, it's never been the final destination for people. Okay. Um, you know, that's just a, a thing. And another thing that has to be said about it is the same thing that plagues a lot of apps. Like a lot of apps that you use on a daily basis for free, things like Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, like they have revenue streams yeah like they have to have they have to have some way of 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 making revenue they can't just keep their doors open because a lot of people use it a lot of them whether you like it or not a lot of them are selling your information to advertisers um which is a whole thing and soundcloud i'm sure can do that but i mean i don't know who i don't know if anybody owns soundcloud i don't know if I don't know how viable of an option SoundCloud is. I don't SoundCloud know if anybody's is, ever owned a plant before. You know, that a lot of these companies that start up, a lot of these app companies, they start up and they exist to build a big user base so that a bigger company like a Facebook can go and buy Instagram. Yeah. Whatever it is. I don't know if they have a company that owns them because if they did, they probably wouldn't even give a shit. Yeah. Like if they're making money or not. Right. Uh, something else that speaks to that point. There are like, also a lot of competitors out there. Bandcamp is one. I mean, there's been companies that have gone away. Pure Volume. I mean, yeah. SoundCloud is essentially the repeat of Pure Volume. 100%. Um, two friends of mine that are in a project together, they just skipped Separated? right over. Okay. They skipped right over SoundCloud. And they, they just were like, it's all about singles on Spotify. And it, so that's what people are doing It now, used to so. be a lot harder and a lot more exclusive to get your stuff on Spotify. Like you had to have a distributor. Like for instance, it was going to be a kind of a hassle to get separator stuff on Spotify. Brave the Storm's on Spotify. Yeah. And now it's super easy. The company that I use for mastering, one day they announced, hey, 
we just if you're a paid member of our service to have your stuff mastered, we now can distribute your stuff on Spotify. And I was like, fuck, that's yeah. great. Um, so anyway, let's speaking of all the services, let's break down the monetization of it all. Okay. So like Spotify was definitely lower tier when it came to giving artists uh, their earnings. Of of the big three. Now here's the thing that's always been said. The the big thing that's always been said is these services don't pay enough, which is all relative. Like what the fuck do you know about <laughs> like that? How much should people get paid? That's a big question. I can go into that on a music episode sometime, but the big three Spotify, Apple music and title are, they were within distance of each other. Yeah. Now the biggest, I believe the biggest the person that has had the highest payout was like Napster, I think, which who uses Napster? Yeah, who uses Napster as a streaming service? Which is weird because you think wouldn't it be the other way around? Like that the the highest uh, subscription service would probably be able to pay out the most, right? Mm, wouldn't you think? Not necessarily. Like how, does, how does Napster have more money to give? Well, Napster is owned by another company. They're owned by a big parent company, so th- they very well could be using that to entice more artists to come to their service. But the artists just aren't necessarily getting it because people don't, right. <laughs> they don't have the user well, base. Exactly. It's about user base. It's about, it's about putting your music out to scale. One of the big things that came out from that report was how little YouTube pays. YouTube also has the biggest user base. So even though it pays out the less or the least amount, your, your ability to be recognized on that service is far exceeded. Yeah. And the thing that that come down to it that comes down to it all, am I saying that right? Um, one thing about this report that came out, and we can talk about the color morale thing if you want to. Um, do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> there was this whole thing about how many plays it takes for an artist to get minimum wage, right? And all these people, including your beloved Garrett Rapp from uh, color, color morale, morale, decided to take this headline. And sensationalize it. And it was something like, for instance, on one, I think on title of the big three, they pay out the most, but again, it, we're talking about fractions. Uh, it was something like a hundred thousand plays could earn you minimum wage. And he, for whatever reason decide, and I've seen other people are throwing this out there. Like it's, no, go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. Sorry. I thought you were pausing me. It's, it, he's throwing that out there. Like it's some sort of tragedy, like, it takes a hundred thousand plays for us just to get minimum wage. First of all, a hundred thousand plays for how many? How many monthly listeners do they have? Two sixty four. Two hundred sixty four thousand. How many? I mean, they have ten. Oh, wait. What? Oh, never mind. Go ahead. So they have two hundred sixty four thousand monthly listeners on Spotify alone. Now that's just the month. They so that's, that's more than double the statistic that we're speaking about, right? Right. It's more than more than double. They're a mid-sized band, pretty big band for their genre, I would say. Yeah. Um, f- to give context, a million monthly listeners, I would consider a big band. Like a band, a brand new, has a million listeners. Bonnie Vare has 4.4 million listeners. Uh, they also have 10 songs on their album. So if just 100,000 people half of their user base listen to one of those songs once they've already made minimum wage. Yeah. It's not a crazy number. A hundred thousand plays on YouTube is a lot, but it's also nothing for a successful YouTuber. Right. To make a living on like here, I'll bring up some of our YouTube statistics real quick. Keep, okay. Keep, yeah, keep for on. sure. I mean the, the the thing to take away from this is actually Walking away from this report, I was even more happy with Spotify about what they're paying out because when it comes down to it, I've said it a million times, and it's not fun to say being a massive, massive music fan and music lover, is that the value of music is near zero. It's not worth anything just because of simple supply and demand. The amount of artists that exists out there and how easy it is to make music has made the value of it go down. I'm sick and tired of hearing people bitch moan and complain about not getting paid for music i'm just sick of it because i also see these same artists they don't do shit 
except for tour, sell merch, and put out albums. You're doing the same shit and expecting different results. Like, figure out something else. Start a podcast. Uh, and a start lot of, a YouTube channel. A lot of the musicians in this space become producers. A hundred percent. What's his name that recorded uh, A Day to Remember? Those few albums. I can't think of what his name was. Chad but... Gilbert from um, Chad Gilbert from yeah. Newfound Glory. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and Mark Hoppus. Even uh, Matt Whitworth is doing yeah. that. Matt Whitworth produces people out in LA. Adam D from Kill Switch Engage. There you go. The band that I always go back to with this is Converge. A lot of people listening to this probably don't know who they are. They are one of the most abrasive bands you will ever hear in your life. They have almost virtually no crossover appeal. At all, with the exception no. of Andre 3000 being at their concert last night. <laughs> but they have been around for decades, and they are still making music. They're yeah. approaching, they might even be in their 40s, but they're successful because their singer owns a record label, and he is a very successful graphic designer and artist. Their guitar player is a massive producer, produces some great albums for some big bands, and their drummer plays in multiple bands and their bass player also plays in multiple bands. This is a definition of, indu- of an industrious band. So me hearing these artists complain about shit like this is the same thing that I hear when a, another podcaster or another YouTuber is complaining about not getting big. What the fuck are you doing? Yeah. Like you're not doing anything to, to put it into perspective. They all need to, they all need to watch Gary V. A hundred percent. They, um, I, I, I'm not a YouTube expert by any means, but just to kind of give some clarification, yeah. it's sort of where we are because we have like 540 subscribers, something like that. Um, I think for every thousand views, we get a dollar. Right. So that's sort of where we are. Like we have a video that has over seven thousand views. We've made seven dollars, right? And that's sort of uh, the average of where we are. So, Grim Green, the guy that I've, I, the only like successful YouTuber that I know, sort of, I've talked to, he has three hundred thousand YouTube subscribers, and he makes a decent living. And he does, yeah. he has some other side gigs and side hustles. Like, I mean, I guess he's bigger than Color Morale, but I mean, that's the other thing to be said about this too, right? Bands have more people in them. Bands, yeah. That's true. Bands need to do better on YouTube. A hundred percent. There, I have a huge. So we talk all the time about balance and composure. Love them to death. One of our favorite bands right now. I have no idea what they're doing from time to time. I wish I knew more. I wish I got some behind the scenes stuff. It's true. And look, there is this romantic sort of discussion to be had of like we're artists, we're not marketing people. Okay. I respect that. I get that. And I'm not saying this about balance and composure, but I also don't want to hear you complaining about it then. The the thing that aggravates me about what Garrett Rapp is doing is that he started playing music in the same landscape. Like, So he was like, hey, I still want to be a band. I still want to play this particular type of music knowing what the result is. And yeah. if anything, it's gotten better since right. he's been in a band. So it's just kind of annoying. Because I, I played the type of music he's playing, obviously not to the same level, but I knew the type of music I was playing and I knew how much work it took to actually get to a particular level. So it's weird. I just hate, it goes back to the argument that we don't need to have right now, but you always talk about, it's like the the bigger bands just forget about the early bands, the beginner bands. Yeah. And so it's just frustrating to see Garrett Rapp of all people just be like, this is the problem. Even though... When he started that band, music was in a worse state. And they went through two albums, and and, uh, you're much more familiar with them than I am, but one of the fascinating things about that band is they they were about to get dropped from their record label before they put out No Hope. Yeah. And it completely skyrocketed their career. Which is weird, though, because they were still on an upward trajectory. I mean, they were. That first album came out of nowhere, and then when My Devil in Your Eyes came out, I mean... That made that made them even bigger, but they, and then No Hope took them to the next level. It but. was it was always strange to me considering what that band was then, and to see people that were doing similar things to them, that were getting a lot bigger, like a band like yeah. We Came as Romans, even the Devil Wears Prada to a certain extent, skyrocketing at a rate much quicker than they were. Yeah, 
And I mean, you can, and I told you this, I'm going to end up doing a more than music episode about it when, when they finally come out, but that album, no hope. I mean, you can look at their numbers album debuted on billboard charts. I mean, it right. sold more albums than anything before it had. Yeah. So your upward trajectory is true. Um, just to sort of wrap up, I guess this discussion, um, the whole record labels making profits, record profits. I mean, how do you how do you feel about that? Is that surprising to you? It is. Yeah. It definitely is. I say record. I don't mean record. They're making double digit percentage profits, which is a great to report. It does surprise me. Yeah. Just because you know, again, going back to what you said, you're supposed to think that they're dying, and you're right. You're supposed to think that they're struggling. You're supposed to think that they're playing a victim because that's how it comes across. But it's like. Then you hear that when you when you hear something like that, and granted, color morale isn't attached to something like Warner, I don't think, but you hear that, and it's like it's just kind of conflicting reports in a way. Well, I'd love to dive into the actual business of it, but and I don't know exactly what their business models are. It's had to it's had to have shifted a lot recently. I know that it used to be record labels didn't demand cuts of merchandise; they didn't demand cuts of touring. It was almost specifically on album sales that's changed but also the fact that look who who do people think negotiates these royalty rates yeah with it's the major record labels they could be playing a numbers game they could be signing a shit ton of people and shoving it on soundcloud and getting those dollar amounts minuscule dollar amounts but with a wider group of people right um that could be it also cutting like big commercial deals i mean like just as a for instance, I was going to bring this up, but time permitting, we're probably not going to be able to dive into it. Bon- yeah. Bonnie Iver just announced that he's doing a retreat destination, like fucking vacation uh, festival. It's a five day event where Bonnie Iver is playing at a resort in Mexico. And um, that's like a weird thing that you used to never see. Paramore has their own cruise line tour bands figuring out different ways to make money. I think that's how it is, but yeah. All right, all right. <laughs> we talk too much about. I'll Starbucks. talk to you. Tom- I'll talk to you. Stories. Yeah, I, I'll talk to you tomorrow. We'll talk to you later tonight. We're gonna do Game of Thrones. Oh, that's right. Um, yeah, I have to leave. So, but I mean, this was such a weird episode. Yeah, you it's can so find strange. us online. Links in the description below. Uh, you can <laughs> find me on Twitter and Instagram at What Up Snell and. Uh, that's all we got. <laughs> Are we ending it that fast? Yeah, you can find me some other places too. <laughs> oh, excellent. We'll see you guys later. If, if, only the, the attitude, if only we had this attitude throughout the entire episode, it would have been a much more succinct episode. Oh, absolutely. Okay. After Party Weekly.